Hello, my name is Roland Reyer. I'm a technical specialist at Autodesk Media Entertainment in Europe. For my original video about the quick rig process in Maya, I received a lot of questions about the setup of the hands. Unfortunately, there is no automatic setup for the hands in the quick rig, maybe due to technical reasons, I don't know. But it's actually pretty easy to attach the hands by yourself and I want to show you how. So very much like for the original quick rig, I would select all of the geometry and then go into the skeleton menu and open the quick rig. Instead of using the one button solution here, I would go to the step by step, create a new character node, select all of the geometry here. And then the first step would be to create the so-called guides. These are the positions of the joints inside the geometry. And we can correct them easily by using the snap to projected center solution here, the snapping solution. So I'm positioning the wrist a little bit and the elbow that should be okay for now. And I select these two joints and mirror them over to the other side because we want to have the same setup on both sides. The next step would be to create the skeleton. And I not only create a skeleton here, also create a control rig. That is a human IK control rig. When I turn off the snapping here, I can already move it around. You see that the control rig is working. Undo. And the next step, step would be skinning, right? So before we start skinning here, I would like to add the hands. Let me zoom in here to the hands. I can hold the control and the alt key and open a little with the left mouse button, open a little frame here so that it zooms into the hand and centers the camera around the hand so that I can easier um, check, you know, my, my new created skeleton. And I will move the quick rig dialog out of the window. Um, so here in the human IK panel, you see these buttons here. These are display buttons for the quick rig and the human IK skeleton here. So we don't see the human I or we don't see the real skeleton at all until we push this button here to show the real skeleton. And this is the joint where we want to attach our new new hand skeleton here. And it's actually pretty easy. So you open the or you, you select the joints tool. You can double click on that tool, but please do not use this symmetry here. It's I know that it's tempting to use it, but that's the wrong choice for this one here. This would assume that you do the complete arm with this tool and then it would symmetrize it and would also create constraints that move both parts of the skeleton together. We don't want that here. We can mirror these joints later. So with the tool engage, you click on the joint here. And then of course, with the uh, snap to projected center option turned on, you just click on the geometry and your the joints will be in the right position. So just move them a little bit and you see that's already working. So this is already inside the geometry. To make the new, uh, to start a new finger, I go up with my cursor keys, one, two, three times up with the cursor key, and then create a knuckle joint here and the forefinger. Here we go. And then go up with the cursor keys again to make the middle finger. And you see, I can do it live here because it's actually a pretty fast process. It's not so complicated to do it all while you're watching. So here's the ring finger and then the pinky, I think is the name, right? So here we go with the last finger. And that's already it. I hit the return key to leave the tool and we check all the joints. They are all in the correct position for me. Sometimes this very last joint is a little bit too much up, but you know, the position of the last joint doesn't matter too much. You can move it in and out because we are not skinned yet. And before we do the skinning process, we should check the orientation of the joints. So when I select this one here, for example, and go to the rotate tool, you see that the green circle here, that's the Y rotation. That would be the rotation of my finger downwards. And then for the next joint, it is the blue circle, that's the Z axis rotation for the finger to go downwards. And that's not good, that's not right. We want them all to have the same orientation because we want uh, eventually rotate them all together to make a fist, for example. So what I can do here is to select 
select the parent, the, the wrist joint here, hold the right mouse button and then select hierarchy. Now all the joints are selected and then I go to display and transform display, toggle the local rotation axis on. This shows the local coordinate system of all of my joints. And these finger joints here not only have the wrong axis pointing to the side here, they're actually completely oriented wrong. You know, the x-axis points in the direction of the global x-axis or something, some, some, you know, somehow in the wrong orientation, especially for the thumb. It's not working correctly. So what we can do here is to use a function called orient joints. This can do the whole hierarchy of joints at once. So when I click on apply here, this will use the x-axis and orient the joints so that the x-axis points down the next bone here. And then the y-axis should point upwards. That's the secondary axis. When we do that, we get an error message here saying something with the left hand is wrong. It has non-zero rotation. And that comes from the fact that, we're, that I was moving this quick rig or, the, or I was moving this humanite K rig already to show you that it's already working. When I select this uh, wrist joint here and go to the channel box, you see that there's for the Z rotation, there must be some super small value here. What I can do is to select, select them all and hit a zero to just zero them out. And then suddenly this whole thing here will work. Or and look at the axis here, how they you know, jump into the correct position for most of the joints. So for all these fingers here, it works correctly, but for the thumb, we still have the wrong orientation. And the funny thing is that, you know, this local coordinate system called the local rotation axis, we can rotate this coordinate system. But to pick these pieces, it's not enough to pick a bone we have to pick this part of the bone, which is a component. So you go to the component mode and then you have to open this one here, this, this uh, section of the status bar, which is the selection mask. And here under the question mark, when you hold the right mouse button on the question mark, you can pick the local rotation axis. Now my pick mask is set so that when I click on that, I can select one of these local rotation axes and with a rotate tool, I can rotate it around the X axis so that it doesn't move anywhere, you know, into a weird location or so. But this is correct. Now, when I rotate around the Z axis, that would be correct for the thumb here. And we do the same for this one over here, rotate it around like so until it fits the finger. And we would do that for any of these axes that are not correct, except the last ones here. We don't care about those ones. Okay, when it's fine, I hit F8 to go back into the object mode. And with this parent object here selected, I would select the hierarchy again, and then toggle these local rotation axes back off because it's all working. And we, then we would check it. So I would, you know, simply select all of these joints at once. Let me quit the rotate tool for a moment for the selection. So I'm selecting all of these joints here so that all of them are selected. And then with the rotate tool, I use the Z axis and I see, okay, when I rotate all of these Z axis, it works okay. It would close the hand or would make a fist with all of the uh, all of the joints at once and the same here, you know, when I rotate them both at once, it would, you know, do exactly what a thumb would do in this situation. So that's fine for me. So this part is okay. And now I want to mirror that over to the other side. When I do it just like so, as it is currently, the, the mirror function that we find here on the skeleton, this one, along the YZ plane. This is, you know, the arms are stretched out in the X axis. That's the YZ plane. Um, that would assume that I want to mirror around this joint here. It always assumes that I have selected, you know, something like this here, and I want to mirror the whole arm over to the other side. And, and in this case, it, that's not what I want. So what I can do here is to to detach it from the arm, to detach this hand from the arm, hitting Shift P. That is unparent here in the edit, you find the unparent here. Shift P is the hotkey for that. 
So the bone disappears, but we didn't lose anything. We just left, uh, lost this connection here. We can easily re-establish that. And then I take this hand here and move it over to the other side. Before I do that, I would delete this wrist joint also. And then, you know, move, move the hand or mirror the hand over. So it makes a copy of my hand and uh, moves it over to the other side. And then I take this hand and reattach it to, with P, you know, parenting, reattach it to the elbow and the same thing over here, P, reattach it to the elbow. This will cause a problem here because I deleted the original quick rig wrist joint. Um, it's not a real problem, you know, it's just a display thing that you will see in a second. Okay, so we go back to the human IK panel here and turn the skeleton off. And here you see what I mean. Here the hand bone itself disappears, the wrist joint with all its connection to the finger disappears. And here it's still there. That's the only thing that I could find so far that is, that is different from, from what we had before. And now I can turn back on the human IK uh, rig. And now I can also go into the next step of, of skinning. Um, before you skin, make sure that you click on the, on the settings here and bump up the resolution. For the fingers, you need a higher resolution. At least, you know, if, this, if it's the relations are like, like in this case here, that you have a human body and normal sized fingers, then 256 would not be enough. So you have to go up to 512. Uh, 1024 is a little bit too high. It takes too long for skinning. So this one here should be okay when I do the skinning. And by the way, when you go on the, uh, uh, on the settings here, the tool will select the skeleton and the geometry so that you just have to click on bind skin. Don't deselect anything or select anything additionally. The tool does it right for you so that you just have to click on bind skin uh, and it works properly. You see, it takes a little bit longer, but mm, that's fine for me. Now we can close the quick rig dialog and see if everything has worked. So I select one of the fingers, rotate tool and rotate the finger down. You see the fingers are properly separated. Cursor to the side will select the next child in the row. Okay, that all works fine for me. Beautiful. I can undo all of these steps and then also try the thumb because a down one will select the next child that also works fine for me. Right. And of course, you know, when I select the whole uh, human IK setup here, this all works fine. The whole skinning is, is okay. So this is how you attach the hands to a quick, quick um, setup, just in case you, was, you were wondering how you would do that.